Today we're going to look at for each loop behavior. So as an example, if I go ahead and create a string and then I say that for each and a hundred times we print out that string, so we do a write output, we should get a hundred times the same string. Now, when we're using for each object without a parallel option, we're just going synchronous, so we're going one after another. And as you can see here, it does help if you write the parameter correctly. So the string name is important. So we get a hundred outputs, so it's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want to do this and potentially save some resources because you have something a bit more complicated than just writing the output, you would do this with the parallel switch, which was introduced in PowerShell 7. Now, once we use the parallel switch, each output or each run is in its own run space. Now, this leads to an interesting behavior because in those run spaces, this string doesn't exist. So for those of you who remember workflows, you can fix this with the use of using and then pipe basically the string into that workspace or run space as it is. And now you have the same output as expected. And whilst this is very easy with PS objects and strings and arrays, what if you want to do something more complicated like a function? Well, function in this case, there's kind of two options. Uh, you can write the function directly into it. So you can have a for each object and then the function, which is not particularly practical when you look at the point of view that um, you would need to write each and every function into the run space, and therefore you end up with these huge run spaces. Or you can put them into a globalized somehow, so creating basically functions using PowerShell modules. Or alternatively, you could load them in using the import module and then specify the location of that module or the file that you expect to have. So let's look at how this works in the real world. So again, if we use the um, asynchronous, where we just say, okay, we've got a for each object and call it, it works fine. If we use this with a parallel, and we're now basically creating new run spaces, you can see we get an error output saying that, well, this function doesn't exist in this run space. So, as previously mentioned, we can solve this in a number of ways. So let's just demonstrate one such example where we say, okay, let's create the function within that run space directly. So we're just going to go ahead and try to call. Um, and you see, okay, no problem. We, we have the same behavior here without the parallel option. And now with the parallel option, it still works. So that's an option. It's very much not a recommended option, but it is something that you can do. Now, perhaps a more appropriate way would be something along the lines of calling import name of your custom module. And, and you can do this in a couple of ways, actually, because you can use the import module to point to a PS script. So the functions can exist within the PSM1 file, and you just have that PSM1 file sitting somewhere that you can call. So you'd say import, let's say C, my name of my module, dot PSM1, and then you can call the functions after it's loaded. And, and that would be a workaround for this. So you can still have one or two lines instead of having thousands of lines. And I think that's probably the best option available to you at this point, but it's something to consider if you're not using modules directly. So the motto of this story is always use modules.